Welcome to NAFDAQ and your health. My name is Tosin Omolaja. This is the program that brings you all the important information you need to know about NAFDAQ, the agency saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding our health by ensuring that the foods, drugs, cosmetics and medical equipment made available to us are safe and wholesome. NAFDAQ as a regulatory agency has experienced tremendous growth since the assumption of Professor Mujisola Adeyeye as Director General of the agency. Infrastructural development, staff welfare, good regulatory practices, among others, has been a concern in ensuring NAFDAQ attains maturity level 3 of the World Health Organization Global Benchmarking. Today on the program, we turn our spotlight on activities of Professor Mujisola Adeyeye in our quest to enhance the regulatory activities of the agency. I joined NAFDAQ four years plus, about two months ago. And uh, the directors in uh, Abuja especially will remember the first two years. Once I start minuting on something, I said, oh, this is supposed to be five million. Can we reduce it to three million? Can we source another vendor for cheaper uh, price or quote? I said, that one million, we will add it to buy a vehicle. So at a point, they keep telling me, yeah, we will add it to buy a vehicle. <laughs> this will buy a vehicle. The money we save is the money we have to spend for needs. Not for once. We could have chosen to spend money for once. And the nation will suffer this consequence. But it's not just the nation now. Our staff will suffer the consequence. The director just mentioned tools. If you have a child and that child doesn't have books to read in school or mathematics set or whatever, that child can never realize his or her own potentials. That is why we started saving money. Despite the fact that I met 3.2 billion Naira debt and within one year we paid 3.01 billion. People ask me, why couldn't you use the money where you are generating to start buying things or what you need? I said, in developed countries, you owe money, you pay the debt. And they make you to think why you should never owe somebody money again or why you should never go into debt. We did that for the first two years we started learning on how not to owe money, how to pay our bills, how not to be in debt. That is, this is the result of what we are seeing today. I want to thank the staff all over the country. This is not about me, it is about NAVDAC staff. Because if I want to drive them and they refuse to be driven, there's nothing I can do. The directors lined up behind me to get to where we are today. I want to thank the directors, the staff all over the country. Our quality management system that was spread down nationwide is working. Our culture is changing. The culture of love this country first. You may think that the country has not done much for you, but where will you stop or where will you start? We have to start somewhere. We are commissioning 73 vehicles. That is not the end. We are buying more vehicles. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to us. 
The staff of the agency appreciated efforts put in place by Professor Mujisola Adeyeye in ensuring staff needs are met to enhance activities of the agency in line with the mandates of safeguarding the health of the nation. This thing started as a dream. But like they say, what we see now is evidence-based. I want to thank God first for giving us Professor Moji Shaladi here. And I want to thank you, ma'am, for what you've allowed God to do in your life. Because if you didn't want to do it, it wouldn't have been possible. So we want to thank God and thank you, ma'am. So God be the glory. The type of work we do here, thank God this week has been a week of tools, tools. We are talking about uh, um, uh, the um, uh, WHO uh, Global Benchmarking uh, Tools. These are the tools to do the work, the major tools. Without these tools, this work cannot be done, especially for us. Let me start. This is charity begins at home. At enforcement, if we are in the office all the time doing computer, computer in, computer out. You won't be able to get all those people. I'm not saying that computer is not important. Computer is very important. But we have to go out. We've never had this thing before in the annals of Lambda. This is the first time we are having over 40 vehicles. More than, because after this, the DG will be going to Osho there as well, to commission. And you have some also in, uh, in Abuja. Never seen this kind of thing. Not only is it this location, in three locations, Abuja and Oshot. I am particularly happy for one thing. Henceforth, companies will not come to take our staff for inspection. They will not do that with this. When we are going, we are going with confidence. We are going to do the job. I supposed to be done. Because I feel that when somebody takes you in his or her vehicle, the compromise I just parted from our uh, office. But that will never happen again with what you are seeing today. Ma, I want to thank you for having us in your mind. You have just changed the narrative. Basically changed the narrative. That is the thing. Whether we like it or not, this is going to enhance regulatory activities and improve our efficiency. Ma, I want to thank you. God bless you, strengthen you. The only thing we need to do now is to call our DG to go and commission the 43 vehicles. We have 43 vehicles for our work in this agency. When we leave, we are going to also. That is very critical also. Because I see people come around. We don't have buses, we don't have that. But our DG procured 10 buses. It's not a joke. Just like other people are going to say. Do you know it is possible for our DG to overlook all those things? And that she's not interested. That is truth about it. We have been here before. I've told you, I've spent over two decades. I've seen vehicles, but not the number I've seen today. NAFDAC has undergone several restructuring processes since the assumption of Professor Adeyeye as the Director General of the agency, all in our quest to increase the agency level to international standard as well as to attain maturity level three of the global benchmarking of the World Health Organization. The journey toward NAFTA reaching maturity level three. The journey started January 16, 2018, uh, when we decided that we're going to adopt international best practices because we don't have a choice but to adopt international best practices. This table shows the recommendations that we needed to make or to meet rather. And there may be a little bit of uh, discordance in terms of few numbers, but you can see that by January 2018 or in January 2018, we needed to have 868 or thereabout recommendations to get to maturity level three. We started working, and it was a very tough uh, ill to fly, but uh, with the directors and staff all over the country, 
we decided that we're going to plant this hill, this mountain together. By June 2019, we have reviewed those recommendations to about 146 or thereabouts. Uh, it was not easy at all, but it is all about governance. It is all about vision. It is all about the top management. Where do we want to go? And what do we want for our people in terms of the outcomes, the health outcomes? So we decided that we don't have a choice but to find that case. Uh, so in June 2019, uh, we got our first uh, visit from the WHO. Uh, around the same time, we got our visit from the Quality Management System Auditor. We were doing both in parallel. It was tough, but again, it was the best thing that could have happened to us. Because without quality management system, you cannot get anywhere as a regulatory agency. No way. You have to build the quality system into uh, the regulatory framework. When the COVID-19 pandemic came and stalled everybody uh, for about six or six, eight months, we didn't even think of, of quality management back in the courts. We have to provide for so many. Uh, so many commodities for our people. However, we picked it up at uh, the third quarter of 2020, started again. And by July 2021, we have reviewed those recommendations that we needed to meet to 33. Those 33 included our legal framework, uh, excuse me, our, our regulation, the gazette of them. And then uh, we kept working hard at this. And then uh, I want to thank WHO again because even during the pandemic, they were, we were still doing much of uh, discussions on where we are, where we are going. By September 2021, we were able to take care of all the gazetting of our regulation because it is one thing to have regulations, it is another to be officially recognized by the government. So that was what stalled us. And then the three uh, functions actually that uh, led to this sum of three in 20 September last year was has something to do with our laboratory testing. Uh, in 2019, we were advised that we needed to expand uh, our lab and I knew that we needed to expand and then we had to go through uh, the approval. We'll take a short break now. Don't go away. Welcome back. If you are just joining in, you're watching NAFDAQ and your health. Good regulatory practice is a vital aspect in ensuring the nation is free from expired and substandard products. NAFDAQ, as a regulatory agency in ensuring the health of the nation is safeguarded, engages in several activities to ensure compliance to good regulatory practices. What is the impact of good regulatory practice in a pandemic situation? We had to learn very, very quickly. There was no book or notes to take or to read that, oh, this is what you should do now uh, because each country is different. But application of risk-based approach uh, during pandemic came to us quickly and it was good that we had our quality management system training, which actually, by the way, we got certified in 2019. We have been recertified since then. And once we do a recertification, we start another step audit. That has helped us greatly. So we are not waiting. Somebody was asking me, oh, uh, when you get my quality level three, is that it? I said, no, it's the beginning because we continue to self-audit and continue to get at the maturity level three, it's not the end, maturity level four, of course, but renewal of that status is going to be every three, three years. So there is no regulatory agency that can just sleep. I uh, will make this to happen uh, by developing a quality to wage tariff uh, during that period for some products. Uh, and also in terms of market authorization, we change quickly on how to use business continuity plan. 
each directorate learns what it means to use business continuity plan, which we learned under QMS, meaning how to do things that you ordinarily would do for one, one month, how to make it happen in one week. And bear in mind, 80% of, of our staff were not on seat because the government said level 13 below must stay at home because of COVID. So we worked our backs out, so to say, uh, in terms of making this to happen. So now that procedure of risk management uh, that covers circumstances like the pandemic that were followed, issuance of emergency permits for medical devices, test kits, behaviors, PCR machines, endless. Um, is working, and we were working from home for about five weeks. I believe we were working straight from home. We didn't go out at all uh, to, to make this to happen. And that leads again to digitalization of our process. In 2018, our union had a strike. The NAFTA union had a strike. And at that point, we have not put anything in place. And I vowed that this will never happen again. If there's going to be a strike or whatever the disaster, we can work from home and we will we, we'll be able to do that. Uh, we were able to list approvals of uh, COVID related herbal medicines, about 40 products, uh, sanitizers, about 286 uh, applications were approved, and this within five to ten days. Within five, when I was a little general, sometimes it's like two days, you know. Uh, local face covering, non medical mask, eight. One medical mask, the first medical mask to be made in Nigeria was made during that time. Aside from all this, uh, we tuned in to emergency use authorization and we were able to approve so many vaccines, uh, starting with AstraZeneca from Serum Institute, Covishield, uh, uh, Pfizer, Moderna, Janssen, uh, Sinopharm, Sputnik, Covaxin, and then later different variations of AstraZeneca from UK, Germany, Italy, Canada, and so on. And again, business continuity plan, we were able to do this within 15 days. The, the vaccine committee is a multidisciplinary committee. Uh, they send this to me after they uh, put it together and approve it. And I review again and then those will go back and forth a little bit. And then the notice is sent to the minister of health and then to the executive director of the uh, National Primary Health and Development Agency. Still continue on the flexibilities that an NRA must have based on knowledge of quality management system. Uh, we were able to do, uh, to follow through uh, post uh, emergency use authorization, the product life cycle of COVID-19 vaccines, which is essentially part of market control. Of course, this starts with our first infection data factor and this management system, it comes. Uh, this provides automation. That's part of our digitalization, which I'm going to show later. Automation of NAFTA port clearance. Uh, when I got this job, there were evaded payments in billions. People would not pay or bribe or whatever. But now, that is almost impossible because of our digitalization. It's not just making us efficient. It's bringing money into the pockets of the agents. So this uh, it can to capture and transmit traceability information at point of entrance. It went, it's worked very well, it's working very well for us. As you're going to see that we are leading uh, in terms of traceability in Africa for COVID-19 uh, vaccines. Uh, because with the field count, we were able to interface uh, with our scanning procedure and also in-country serialization. Uh, there were, I'm going to show that there were vaccines that came on serialized and we have adopted traceability since 2019 as a means of making the supply chain more feasible. 
So this bit comes work very well for us. And uh, for traceability and vaccines, we were able to do signalization for verification and tracking information. Under strict cold chain maintenance to ensure that the vaccines are not substandard, no infiltration into the supply chain, and also to track the distribution chain and also support from our vigilance and PMS activities. Here's where we draw the curtains on this edition of the program. Join us same time, same station next week for another informative package. In the meantime, if you have comments, complaints, or you want to report activities of fake drugs or adulterated food product peddlers, our doors are always open. You can reach NAFTA via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162. 3322. For complaints, call 0800-162-3322. You may also email nafdac at nafdac.gov.ng. If you have complaints about any form of misconduct, you can reach the reforms unit via email reforms at nafdac.gov.ng or call the reforms hotlines on 0909-763-0506 or 0909-763-0507. NAFDAQ, customer-focused, agency-minded. COVID-19 is real. Please ensure you and your family follow safety measures as outlined by the NCDC. Stay away from crowded places as much as possible. And if you must be out there, please wear a face mask. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water and ensure you use only NAFDAQ approved alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Taking the NAFDAQ approved COVID-19 vaccine is safe. It's our best bet of stamping out the deadly coronavirus. And don't forget to download the MedSafety app from iOS or Play Store to report any adverse reaction from the vaccine or any other medicine at all. See you next week. Stay safe.